31 Minecraft facts you maybe missed. Minecraft is chock full of different blocks, mobs, and items, which means it's tough to keep track of all the different information. So today we're going through the Minecraft facts that might have passed you by. And hey, according to YouTube, no one's ever subscribed to the channel using their elbow. So if you're up to the challenge, place your funny bone in that red sub button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Number one. Now I've seen plenty of people build their bases across the overworld and the nether, but a distinct lack of them in the end dimension, which makes some sense considering neither beds nor respawn anchors let us respawn in the house. But as you can see, if you place a bed like so underneath the overworld's end portal and then set our spawn, we can set ourselves up to only spawn in the last dimension. And at that point, you might as well socialize with the neighbors because now you're soft locked and you're permanently stuck there. Number two, we're all plenty familiar with piglins, but maybe not like this. And to change their look like that, we'll have to head over to the nether. Then we get our piglins into a pen and flip the switch on a dispenser to equip different items, which clearly can create some odd monstrosities. Or if you want to look at it like this Reddit user, and they're just an anime girl wearing a hat. And honestly, I don't know which is worse to see. Number three, if you've ever made a mob farm, you know you're bound to get some pieces of armor mixed in with the results, which would be nice, but they're usually so battered that it just lasts a little more than a few hits. Or that would be the case if we didn't try this. In Bedrock Edition, when we drown a zombie, you'll get its armor all fully repaired. Meaning if you get one of these guys with a full set of armor, that'll save you 24 ingots, and you don't even have to craft it, which definitely means this is worth adding into your next zombie spawner. Number four, if you've messed around with Minecraft's hidden mobs, then you've probably come across this guy, the Illusioner, who, among their many abilities, has the chance to seemingly create three clones for distraction. But what you might not have noticed is that he doesn't create just three copies, he makes four. And then, after doing that, the original becomes invisible, or rather, gives off the invisibility particles at its location. Which I guess would be a useful tip if you could fight them, but since they're not fully implemented anyway, I think it's safe to say this is just a fun bit of info. Number five, Minecraft famously has its share of visual quirks. And while we've talked at length, about those in the past, this one just cracks me up. See, if we were to hold a ladder as an item in our hands, it has about the same amount of depth as anything else. But when you place that same ladder on the side of a block, it turns paper thin. I mean, this ladder has less depth than a ladder item dropped on the floor. And unless we get something like default 3D in the base game, I guess it'll be a fun thing to notice going forward. Number six, after playing hours of Minecraft, it's easy to lose track of the different sound effects as they blend into the background, which is why you might not have recognized this. But as it is, if you break a tripwire, it actually plays the same sound effect you'll hear from the bow. As a comparison, here's the tripwire hook, and here's the bow. Which is interesting, but I also can't blame you if you never noticed it, because really, unless you're raiding a jungle temple, how often does this come up anyway? But props to Mojang, they reused the sound effect, and I was none the wiser. Number seven, Minecraft's world border is an odd piece of code, and when you fly out 30 million blocks to visit, you'll see as much. But while there's been plenty of attention given to these glitches, I think this is equally strange. See, if you get a spider next to the border wall, then the mobs will start climbing it as they would any the other, which I guess makes some sense, but I'd figure that since we can't place any of our blocks on it, they'd have nothing to grab onto, and it's maybe the only chance they'll ever have it climbing up to build height. Number eight. In the texture update of 1.14, Minecraft got a bunch of changes to its look, and while that was an impressive undertaking, when you're changing around that many textures, some are bound to be overlooked, and this is just that. As you'll notice, if you check your inventory while you're in spectator mode, you'll recognize that the barrier texture used is that of the old one, and while it's definitely not game breaking, it is a fun thing to notice. Number nine. If you've ever messed around with a fishing rod, then you know that these things are great at pulling around different mobs. But what's even more peculiar is that we can pull around entities as well. And I don't think many of us expected TNT to be on that list. But apparently, if you cast a line towards a prime TNT block, we can move that explosive in some way. And hey, since we can also light the bobber on fire with lava, we could use it to ignite it in the same go. Which is cool, but any application for this seems highly situational. Number 10. Bedrock, as we're all familiar with it, is a pretty strong block. But obviously, we've also seen our fair share are glitches and bugs to break the unbreakable. And while that's true, this might be both the strangest and the simplest method in my book. See, in Bedrock Edition, if you lay a cauldron underneath a piece of bedrock, or any block for that matter, and then fill it in twice with powdered snow buckets, the result is a powdered snow block in place of that bedrock. And what's even better is that we can reuse that same snow for doing it all over again. Number 11. If you've messed around with the summon command, you know Minecraft has some weird entities in the code. And since they're not traditional, it means we get some odd behaviors when you mix them, like you'll see here. Now, when you light a block of TNT on fire, it turns into a prime TNT as you would expect. But what might surprise you is that if we then shoot this new entity with arrows, our projectiles just bounce off, which means that the only way that we're mixing TNT with arrows is through command blocks. Number 12. Even though you can't see it, it's not a surprise that the ground underneath this snow layer is made up of grass blocks, and you can break it to see as much. But while that grass might look normal when we place a torch, when it's underneath the snow, it's something entirely different. And through the help of an enderman, we can see that texture for ourselves. See, if an 
Endermen were to pick up one of these snowy grass blocks, they ditch the snow and just be left with a strange silver turf instead. And while it doesn't offer much functionality outside of being a grass block, it is still a cool souvenir. Number 13. Boats haven't always been the easiest to use, and some players definitely remember the pains of crashing one of these on a floating obstacle. But thankfully nowadays, it's fixed so that when you crash, you just subscribe to the channel. But even with that fix, these boats still have plenty of quirks to see. In Bedrock, it's entirely possible to tie your boat to the other end of a lead and drag the thing around. Why you would do this, I have no idea, since I'd rather just break the boat and carry it that way. But if you need to, I guess it works. Number 14. Even though Minecraft's textures are simple, a surprising amount of care can go into them. And if you take the time to really study a certain block, you might notice something new. For instance, some of you might be surprised to see that the prismarine texture is actually animated. What's happening here is that the block is slowly transitioning from a bluish hue to a green one. And honestly, without the help of a time lapse or a chart, I would have no way to be able to notice. But I guess this settles any debates going forward. Is it blue? Is it green? Well, it's both. Number 15. Minecraft redstone is a beautiful thing, but it's not always the most intuitive. And a key instance of that would be this example's so-called leaf stone. Now, that might sound silly, but it's actually true that leaves are capable of transferring block updates. See, since these leaves have a tag that updates whenever a log is nearby, we can use an observer to detect that signal. And in that way, we can send quick updates just by moving a log with a piston, which seems crazy, but I know there's pros out there who can think of plenty of practical uses for it. Number 16. Minecraft is famous for its random generation based off a string of integer values. And I think we've all come across these so-called seeds when booting up one that we found online or typing in one of our own. Though on the chances you don't do either, how does the game come up with a seed? Well, the answer is more straightforward than you might think. When left to automatically generate a seed, the game will just use the system's time as that seed. And through this, we're able to access a sliver of the over 18 quintillion possible seeds. And I doubt any of our clocks have enough time to showcase all of those. Number 17. Horses aren't the most ideal form of travel. I mean, you have to spend the time to painstakingly breed for the right stats, only for your special steed to max out at a speed that's slower than the elytra, or it would be unless you're on bedrock. Over here, there's a bug that if you give the parents a potion effect like speed and then breed them together, the offspring will continue to be faster. Do this again for a couple of generations, and we can get some supercharged horses, which is definitely a sight to see. And at this point, they're hard to use for a completely different reason. Number 18. With a game as open-ended as Minecraft, plenty of sneaky details are bound to pass some players by. And this one with wet sponges is definitely a common surprise. And I swear, every time I see a post about this, plenty of comments are shocked to find it out. So today, let's do something of a public service announcement and cover this for good. You see, if you put a wet sponge into a furnace and then smelt it using a lava bucket as fuel, you can get the water back in the bucket when it's done, which is a neat little Easter egg for sure. And now at least we all know it's there. Number 19. With the way that mobs spawn, certain creatures aren't going to mix much in your world, which is fine, but it seems that some of these coded interactions just go unseen by the public. And this is no different. See, I wouldn't blame you if you've never noticed that polar bears can attack foxes, because you're probably not bringing many foxes over there anyway. But sure enough, add one to the vicinity and the polar bear will start to attack. And speaking of someone who's lost mobs to foxes in the past, I'm completely on board with that. Number 20. If you've watched any TV show or movie with a police scene, you're probably familiar with the idea of one-way glass. And to my surprise, we can make that in Minecraft as well. If we were to make a room of glass and then fill every single wall with invisible item frames and map art, then any perpetrator standing inside can only see the map art. However, when we stand outside, we can see in just fine. And let me reiterate, this has to be done with invisible item frames. Otherwise, we just see that leather texture out the back. Number 21. If you've ever pieced together a chicken farm, then you know that these mobs can lay a ton of eggs. And normally we're left cleaning up that overflow. And while that's true, it's apparently not a universal fact, since this chicken right here is incapable of laying any eggs across its lifetime. And what makes this one so special? Well, the reason is that chickens spawn from a baby zombie jockey are coded to not lay eggs ever. And this is likely to prevent any kind of zombie from picking up that egg item and never despawning. Number 22. Now on this show, we've talked plenty about the different quirks and idiosyncrasies that you can find in Bedrock. And with the 1.17 update came a slew of new ones. To see such, take a look at this axolotl here. Now, if we were to tie up the animal with a lead and then pick it up with a water bucket, then when we place it back down, it'll still have that leash attached. And the reason being is that in Bedrock, all of the NBT data is saved when you put the mob inside the container. So if you need another inventory slot, this is one way to bury the lead. Number 23. Fall damage is something of a great equalizer in the Minecraft world, because no matter the enchantments, the potions, or even the hearts that you got, there's an upper limit for all of that. But have you ever wondered how high that could be? Well, as it turns out, if you were to mix together a full set of Protection 4 and Feather Falling 4 Netherite Armor, a Turtle Master Potion with Resistance 4, an Enchanted Golden Apple, and then land on a pad of hay bales, that'll let you survive a fall of 4,504 blocks on half a heart. But really, just use a water bucket. Number 24. Minecraft has plenty of care put into its animations, but if you blink, you might not always appreciate 
them. That is, until you use this command. See, in Bedrock, it's actually possible to use the play animation command to apply different animations to the various mob models. Meaning, not only can we make a piglin dance, but we can do the same to ourselves. And the results can get pretty ridiculous. So if you want to take the time to appreciate Minecraft's vast animation library, this might be the perfect tool for your future dance party. Number 25. I'm sure at some point we've all heard the classic saying that cats always land on their feet. And in Minecraft, that's a fact. But even though these felines don't suffer any fall damage when they drop, they still try to avoid the fall just the same, which I think is fair. I mean, I don't take any fall damage using a water bucket, but that doesn't exactly mean I want to do it all the time. And I think if cats were coded to fall whenever they want, we'd have some plenty weird sights. And I for one don't want the ravine next to a village turning into a litter box. Number 26. Every now and then, it seems Mojang has fun coding in certain loot tables. And while some of those are dark, such as the turtles turning into bowls with lightning, others like this are just clever. As we know, if you kill a zombie, it has a rare chance of dropping a potato, which is handy, but you may want to be careful to not use a fire aspect sword here, because if you do and a potato drops, it'll be baked instead, and that'll delay your farming dreams. So while it does offer a better snack, it might not be best for your long-term return. Number 27. Armor stands seem pretty passive. I mean, it's a bunch of sticks on a slab. How bad could that be? But truth is, they can be a bit more feisty than they seem, and you'll see as much if you give them a piece of thorns enchanted armor. With this, the enchantment applies the same just as it would with us, which I'll admit is a pretty funny sight. And while it doesn't do a lot of damage, you'll still want to make sure that you take off your armor like this instead of just punching it off. Number 28. If you've played around with name tags, you're probably well aware of the different Easter eggs certain names have. And while people will try to get you to believe that the Jeb name tag does more than it does, there is more that we could do using the dinner bone or grum tag. See, the game is coded in such a way where even players will turn upside down when given these names, which means dinner bone's account is also shown to be upside down. But in Bedrock, we can experience that ourselves. If not signed in, change your name to Dinner Bone or Grum, and you'll be upside down just the same as they are. Number 29. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that farming in Minecraft is a lot easier than it is in the real world. I know, that sounds crazy. And we might have the game's wonky physics to thank for that. See, even beyond being able to bone meal crops to maturity in a matter of seconds, there's also some weird magic that happens with the farmland itself. As you'll notice, even though the only thing between this water source block and farmland is air, the crops are hydrated just the same. And I know that there are water droplets in the air, but even this seems hard to believe. Number 30. Minecraft treats certain hitboxes in weird ways, and that can be best seen when we talk about entity stacking. See, in certain cases, it's possible to rest one entity on top of another. And while I personally use this for letting me use a minecart as a hat, it can also let us crowd surf. Sure enough, if you ride a boat on top of a bed of entities, we can ride it just the same as we would on ice. Granted, it might not be the most popular travel method, but I'd say it's definitely worth a try, at least once for the screenshot. Number 31. I'm gonna come out and say it, I don't like baby piglins. I know, that might sound harsh, but honestly, these things are good for nothing except stealing my gold. But unfortunately for us, that situation isn't bound to change. Since, as coded, baby piglins will never become adults. Meaning we're stuck with a couple of bratty kids running around and ruining our commerce. And honestly, if I wasn't trying to stay on the parents' good side, I'd take after Anakin and get rid of the younglings. And with that, folks, crowd surf to that sub button below and have a good one, alright?